Right, I'm gonna take you through some IGCSE physics last minute tips. And this is for your paper two. We're gonna have a look at a moments question. So remember the principle of moments states that the clockwise moments equal the anti-clockwise moment. So they could ask you that as a bold question, or if there's quite a long maths question, it's worth writing that at the beginning, even if you have no idea what's going on, because it tends to be worth a mark. So here's a diagram showing some of the forces acting on a large rubbish bin. The weight of the bin acts through point G. Give the name of point G. That is the center of gravity or center of mass. The mass of the bin is this. What is the weight of the bin? You're going to get that physics equation sheet again in paper too, so no excuses to not pick out the right equation here. So we're after the weight. We've been told the mass is 23. We need to times it by 10. And then it's important that you're aware that the unit of weight is newtons, so don't be tempted to pick that one. The answer here is C, 230 newtons. State the principle of moments. There it is. It's that the sum of the clockwise moments equals the sum of the anti-clockwise moments. A person applies force F to the bin to keep it stationary. Calculate the magnitude of force F. Four marks. Do not stress about this. We're going to use the principle of moments to solve this. So please write down clockwise moments equals anti-clockwise moments. So let's work out the clockwise moment. Moment is given by force times distance. So you need to work out which moment is creating a turning effect that's acting clockwise. It will be G. So it will therefore be, if moment is force times distance, it will be that force we just found out, which was 230 newtons, multiplied by the distance. Just be a little bit careful here with units. It needs to be in meters. So our clockwise moment is 230 times 0 0.37 meters. What's our anti-clockwise moment? So we want the moment acting against the direction of the clock. Well, it will be this force up here multiplied by this perpendicular distance from pivot, which is 98 centimetres. So it's the force F, which we're after, times 0 0.98 metres. Then just make sure you solve the left and right hand side separately. So 230 multiplied by 0 0.37 is 85.1 equals 0 0.9. 98x and then remember to solve for x we divide both sides by 0 0.98 to get 86.8 so you write your principle of moments you look at the diagram it doesn't matter if it's a wheelie bin if it's a seesaw if it's a spanner it's always the same you're going to find your anti-clockwise moments your clockwise moments and then solve for x state the magnitude and direction of the force applied to the person by the bin so the person is standing here, holding the bin. So that force is going to be applied by the bin downwards and it will be the same value. So 86.8 and our direction is downwards. Then there's a little bit of chemistry that features in paper two physics, which is this equation that you'll, if you do can, be very familiar with. It's Q equals MC delta T. So it's nice and straightforward. They'll give you a mass of the liquids, that'll be M. Here they've told us the initial temperature. We've got the thermal store of the water increasing by 210 kJ, and we're being asked to find the final temperature. We've been given the specific heat capacity. So it's just a matter of substituting in all those values, being mindful of units. Look, the thermal store's in kJ, but the specific heat capacity is in joules. So let's get them both into joules by timesing the 210 by 1,000. The mass we've been told is 4.5 kg. The specific heat capacity is 4,200. We're after the final temperature, so we'll need to find the change in temperature in order to do that. So just simplify the right-hand side and then divide both sides by 18,900 to solve. So our change in temperature is 11.1 .1 degrees Celsius. We've been told that the initial temperature was 35 degrees. We know that the thermal store increases, which means the temperature increases. So the final temperature must be 35 plus 11.1 .1 to get 46.1 as your final answer. Now, magnetism obviously could come up. 
The paper two specific magnetism topic states that you know the construction of an electromagnet. So the simplest thing to, here to describe is a wire carrying a current is made into a coil and then a soft iron core is added. So that's your very simple construction of an electromagnet. Really that wire needs to be a magnetic material so it could be made out of iron or steel. Also in paper two, electromagnetism is transformers. So I'll show you an example of a question here. The welding apparatus uses the transformer to decrease the voltage from 230 volts. Because the voltage has been decreased, it must be a step down transformer. State the formula linking turns ratio, input voltage, output voltage. So you're again going to use that physics formula sheet. So voltage primary over voltage secondary equals number of turns primary over number of turns secondary. The table gives some information. Use the information from the table to calculate the output current of the transformer. Assume the transformer is 100% efficient. It's worth five marks. Please don't worry about this. You're just gonna use both equations. So the one that I just wrote out here, let's always write down equations that we need to use. And the other equation we need to use is this one. And it's just a matter of subbing in the numbers that we have. So we know that we're looking for the output current. So that means that it's this here that we need to find out as our final answer, but we're gonna to need to use this equation so we can sub in missing values into this one to find that final current. So voltage primary, we've been told is 230. Voltage secondary is what we're initially after. The number of turns primary is 16. Number of turns on the secondary is four. So we need to solve that for x. So we do 16 divided by four is four. And then we cross multiply to find x. So that gives 57.5 as our voltage secondary. So now we can use this next equation. Voltage primary again is 230. Input current they've told us is 11. I just calculated voltage secondary. I'm after current on the secondary coil. So again, solve for x. So we do 230 times 11 divided by 57.5 to get a final answer of 44 amps. I know that that's quite a tough maths question, but you know it's a question about transformers. Make sure you use the transformer equations and just start subbing in the values and then the answer will start working itself out. Do you remember you need to learn the construction of transformers? So you need to talk about the alternating current being supplied to the primary coil, setting up an alternating magnetic field. Remember, these sorts of things are all in my all-in-one and in my revision guide. So because this is a last minute tips, I won't go into it here. Don't forget static electricity. They like to ask you questions about how things get charged if that's a boy going down a plastic slide, why does his hair stand up on end? Why does someone receive a little shock when they've been walking on plastic carpet? The answer is always that there's a transfer of electrons due to friction. In the case of the boy's hair standing up on end, all of his hairs will gain a negative charge, so they'll repel. Remember, it's the transfer of electrons. So if something loses electrons, then it will gain a positive charge. If something gains electrons, it will gain a negative charge. If they ask you to prove that something's charged, you could use a charge rod and hold it near water and you'll find that the water coming out the tap moves away. Don't forget the maths element of this topic. So for example, here, they're being, we're being asked to find the formula linking charge, current and time. It's this one. Calculate the current if the metal ball takes 0 0.45 seconds to travel from plate Y to plate X. So it's just straightforward subbing in 
We know our charge is 5.1 times 10 to the minus 6. We're being asked to find current. There's our time. Divide both sides by 0 0.45 to get a current of 1.1 times 10 to the minus 5. Don't forget the issues with static charges, things like a fuel tanker might receive a spark from a plane if it hasn't been discharged, which can lead to a huge explosion, hence why there's a metal cable which helps drain the excess charge. You could talk about the various uses of electric charge to do with photocopiers, inkjet printers, chimney precipitators, which are used to remove horrible particles from waste gases in factories. And then momentum, another important paper two topic. Remember the conservation of momentum states that momentum before equals momentum afterwards. The other momentum equation to be aware of is force equals change in momentum over time. So we'll go through a question here. A cricket player hits a ball with a bat. Before the ball is hit, it's moving to the left with the momentum of this. The bat is in contact with the ball for this much time. After the ball is hit, it moves to the right with the momentum of this. Calculate the mean force the bat exerts on the ball and state the direction of the force. Right, please don't stress. We're going to use, because we're after force, we need force equals change in momentum over time. So what is our change in momentum? Well, look, they bolded that, so that's important. It's saying that the ball's moving to the left initially with a momentum of 4.2 kg meters per second. And then it moves to the right with a momentum of 6.7. So what's the change in momentum? Well, it must be the total of these two numbers. Do read the English of the question to make sure your maths is going to make sense. So that gives us a change in momentum of 10.9 divided by the time frame, which is 0.012 seconds. So that gives us an answer to two sig fig of 910 newtons. And the direction is going to be, look at what the cricket player is doing, it's going to be to the right.